everyone. I'm Mary Ellen Puckle, and join me as we take a little bit of a walk through time. We're going to follow the women's suffrage tour on national sites. We're going to begin here at Union Station. And this documentary, or as maybe we might call it a walkumentary for today, is to help uh, bring awareness and support for the Metro Historical Commission Foundation. I'll tell you a little bit more about it in just a second. Here we are at Union Station, and this is where the story all begins for women's suffrage. This is where both women and men who supported women's suffrage got off the trains uh, from all over the country here in Nashville at Union Station. They got off the trains right over there where the train shed used to be and the railroad tracks. They walked into the back of the station here and they entered through uh, and got their luggage and walked out and went to their hotels all across the city. This is where Carrie Chapman Cat came in off the train. Uh, this is where anti-suffragist Josephine Pearson got off the train. And the way that you knew whether someone was for or against suffrage was the color of rose that they wore on their lapel. If you were for suffrage, you had a yellow rose, and if you were anti-suffrage, you had a red rose. So we'll be following in the footsteps of both the women and the men who supported suffrage and opposed suffrage uh, here in Nashville in the hot summer of uh, 1920. We are 100 years exactly from that time, uh, and I can tell you it's also hot. So. Before we leave here, let me tell you a little bit more about the MHCF, uh, who is the main sponsor of not only uh, this tour, but also of uh, national sites and so many other worthwhile projects in the community. It's a 501c3 nonprofit friends group, which assists the Metro Historical Commission in its efforts to identify, protect, study, and interpret the rich history of Nashville. And as we walk along, I'll be telling you more about the MHCF uh, as, as well as many of the projects that they're taking part in. So, join the adventure and let's get going. Now let's go in Christ Cathedral and learn a little bit more about some of the suffragists and their faith. So Christ Cathedral is still an active church here in Nashville with over 2,000 parishioners. And it's, uh, this building was built in the 1890s and it's certainly one of Nashville's most beautiful churches. So to tell you a little bit more about the women who were part of the suffrage movement and their faith, Ann Dallas Dudley and Kate Birch Warner were both members here at the Episcopalian Christ Church Cathedral. But you also had women who were part of other religious traditions and denominations, such as Catherine Kenney, who was a fervent Catholic. Uh, you also had Frankie Pierce, who was a member of the Baptist Church. Uh, and then finally you had Tessie Lowenheim, who was a prominent member of the Jewish community here in Nashville. And it was actually Tessie Lowenheim and Ann Dallas Dudley who helped to organize one of the major suffrage parades that marched down Broadway all the way to Centennial Park, which will be our final stop on this tour. But for now, let's check out the beautiful Christ Church Cathedral. of the Nashville Banner uh, and lots of other community members where 
unfortunately, they had a very racialized message. Uh, that one of the rallies that was held here was called to save the South. And part of the message was that if you gave white women the right to vote, you would also then be enfranchising black women as well. So this is not a part of the story uh, that, that we uh, celebrate, uh, but this is an important part of the story. Next up, we're going to head to the Sassuma Tea Room just down the road. Hey, here we are at the Satsuma Tea Room. Today, this is still an active restaurant. It's called 417 Union because that's its address. But in 1918, two women from South Dakota, Arlene Zeigler and Mabel Ward, moved down here and started their own tea room, their own restaurant. They were famous for decades. Uh, people came from all over and especially downtown uh, to eat meals in their shop. So while they weren't part of the suffragist movement specifically, they were independent businesswomen, and they were also just a block and a half from the Capitol. Uh, so you know that there were a lot of people, both pro and anti-suffrage, who not only ate here, but talked about the amendment and talked about the bill uh, to ratify. So we wanted to include them on this tour. And while we're on this tour, I want to tell you a little bit more about Nashville sites. I've already told you it's over 20 tours, walking tours, but I'm happy to announce we've also rolled out virtual tours that you can take from the comfort of your home. And we've also uh, are working on driving tours and creating an educational curriculum. So we have really exciting things happening for Nashville sites and with the MHCF. And so we hope you'll continue to support us. And finally, I just want to tell you that the author of this tour is the fearless and fabulous Carol Busey, the Davidson County historian here in Nashville. So thank you, Carol. And we're going to head on to the Hermitage Hotel. All right, hello again. Here we are on Ann Dallas Dudley Boulevard. Ann Dallas Dudley was probably the most famous suffragist born and raised here in Nashville. She started in local chapters and went to the state chapter and ultimately became the vice president of the National Women's Suffrage Convention and Association. She worked alongside Carrie Chapman Catt. We've also got the historical marker here, um, and we are right behind the Hermitage Hotel. Now we're going to travel inside and talk to Tom Vickstrom, who's a vice president and the Hermitage Hotel's historian. Um, he's also a member of the NHC Foundation's board. So, Tom, tell us just very briefly about where were the anti suffragists. And where were the suffragists as they were all here in the hotel in 1920? Interestingly, the key anti-suffragist leader, Josephine Pearson, checked in on July 17th. And right at the front desk, while she was checking into her room, she reserved the meeting rooms of the hotel. And uh, on that very same day, Carrie Chapman Catt came in by train from New York, who became the pro-suffrage leader and booked a suite on the third floor. Uh, that's a beautiful view of the state capitol right there from her former room. But Josephine Pearson booked the smallest hotel room, and her team later upgraded her to a suite on the seventh floor. But kind of funny. But they, she ended up on the uh, the mezzanine. They had the entire mezzanine level, which is right over the reception desk, for the anti-suffragists uh, against the Susan B. Anthony Amendment, and that was the Red Rose Group. And we've talked about the, ro the role of the roses. Uh, yes. And so we're going next to the Capitol. Tell us what happened uh, not only with, uh, with uh, Harry Burns, but following the vote. Well, there was uh, great day, eight days of suspense, eight to ten days of suspense and impassioned debates and strategy and tactics leading up to all this um, on the morning of August 18th. Cheers were heard from Carrie Chapman's cat's open window here at the hotel, and uh, the red roses were tossed in the air. Uh, the red roses were dejectedly uh, wilted, apparently, and uh, prepared to go home. But uh, the, uh, the pro suffragists sang uh, My Country Tis of Thee, they broke in a song, and it's documented in the newspaper that they actually walked to the lobby of the Hermitage Hotel where the rejoice was unrestrained. And Harry T. Byrne, uh, actually is well known, he climbed out the window of the state capitol and went into the library. It was too hot there. He went back out onto the window ledge and he, he walked, uh, he ran to the Hermitage Hotel. Uh, one of his, his colleagues said, uh, quite a run you did there, Harry. Your coattails stuck up so far and back, you could have played a game of checkers on it. 
but he uh, sprinted to the hotel to get, to get away from the crowds, and he walked casually then in the front door. He put on his hat and uh, strolled through so nobody would notice him, and then he went out the side door. All right, here we are at our last stop for the walking tour. However, we're going to drive to the final alternative stop, which is at Centennial Park. Uh, but let me first tell you a little bit about the men who help support suffrage. From Luke Lee, the newspaper editor, Percy Warner, the businessman John Ventress, the local attorney, to the governor, Albert Roberts, and of course, the representative from Nyota, Tennessee, Gary Burns. So let me tell you just a little bit about what happened in August here in the Tennessee State Capitol. On August the 18th, it seemed like that some of the momentum that the suffragists had made was dissipating. And it looked like that they were going to lose the vote to the anti-suffrage movement. Um, when they began to do the vote count, it was 48 yellow roses to 48 red roses. A tie, a tie vote meant defeat. But the suspense was broken when Harry T. Burns uh, was wearing a, who was wearing a red rose, literally rose to his feet and to the surprise of everyone in the gallery, voted yes in favor of ratification. The final vote ended up being 50 to 46. Tennessee became the 36th state to ratify the amendment, which was necessary to get a three-fourths three uh, threshold for a constitutional amendment. So after the vote, the final vote was tallied, uh, chaos ensued. But a week after the vote, Governor Roberts signed the certificate of ratification on August 24th. And Carrie Chapman Catt uh, delivered the certificate to Washington, D.C. to the Secretary of State. And the 19th Amendment was ratified on August 26th. Today, August 26th, is still celebrated as Women's Equality Day. So let's go to Centennial Park and finish the rest of the story. So here we are at Centennial Park. Uh, and standing in front of this beautiful statue uh, dedicated to the suffrage movement here in Tennessee. Uh, it was created by uh, renowned sculptor Alan LaQuire and unveiled in 2017. But before I talk more about the women uh, who are part of this sculpture, I want to finish the rest of the story. Um, after the 19th Amendment was ratified, uh, that year, the year 1920, it settled the question for white women. But the disenfranchisement of African American women and men continued under Jim Crow laws across the South. Guaranteeing the right to vote for African Americans would require another grassroots movement that began after World War II. And Nashville also played a pivotal role in the civil rights movement, so seeing our civil rights tours to learn more. So to tell you a little bit more about these women, here in the front, we've got Ann Dallas Dudley holding the banner. She's being supported by Carrie Chapman Catt. And then in the back, we have uh, J. Frankie Pierce, who uh, led uh, not only several uh, community organizations, but was the superintendent of a state vocational school for girls, where she served until 1939. Fearless advocate uh, of Nashville's African-American community. We have a Abby Crawford, Crawford Milton, who was from Chattanooga. She was the first president of the League of Women Voters, and Carrie Chapman Catt said that her activism and lobbying with legislatures was key to getting the 19th Amendment ratified here in Tennessee. And finally, Sue Shelton White, uh, who had a little bit of a different story. She began with the Equal Suffrage League and then shifted over to the Nash National Woman's Party with Alice Paul that tended to use more aggressive tactics. Uh, she was the only Tennessean to actually go and picket the White House in 1919 and to be arrested. So she returned here to Tennessee and was a big part of the fight here and stayed at the Tulane Hotel. So thank you for taking this uh, journey through time with us. Uh, please continue to support Nashville Sites at NashvilleSites.org. We have a donate button as well as NashvilleMHCF.org, which is the foundation's webpage. We had hoped, of course, to have a fundraiser, and we hoped to postpone and, and reschedule that for 2021. But our theme was going to be women's suffrage and the men who make it, help make it happen. And so we hope you'll continue to support us. And I want to end with a dedication, because this uh, tour and this fundraiser uh, for the foundation is in memory of our own fearless leader, uh, a beloved woman, Ann Eden. Ann Eden passed away. Uh, in January of this year. She had been a 
advocate for the Nashville community and historic preservation uh, for many, many years. Uh, she served on the Metro Historical Commission from 1975 to 2009 and was the chair of the MHC from 1989 to 1993. She also served on the MHC Zoning Commission. Uh, she also served as the founding member and our board chair here at the MHC Foundation. So we wanted to dedicate this to her. All right, thank you.